That's Frederick Douglass, one of the men who truly shaped America. His narrative autobiography was one of the best-selling books of the 1900s. He was a powerful writer and speaker, and perhaps the most significant abolitionist in American history. You can all probably tell that I am dying to go off on a history tangent right now, but I'm going to curb my enthusiasm, because I'm here to teach you how to draw. And look at that face. That is a dream come true for a portrait artist. Now, logically speaking, I think if I asked somebody that was new to drawing to draw Mr. Douglas from this reference image, they'd probably freak out a little bit. What I'm here to teach you today is it's all about how you see things. It's a lot easier to draw this than it is to draw this. The purpose of my step-by-step -step videos is to break complex images down into simple puzzle pieces. We simply put them together and then we add shading. Over 10 million people have viewed my videos and tens of thousands have successfully completed them. You are the next one. Let's begin. Step 1. Draw the three shapes that you see. Two are shaped like lemons and one is triangular. Notice the relationship in size between these three shapes. Step 2. Add the circular shape underneath the triangle and the contour for the edge of the face. Notice that the circular shape is about the height of the three shapes that you added for step 1. Step 3. Add eyebrows. Step 4. Add these four lines and notice that one eye length fits exactly in between the two eyes. Frederick Douglass's eyes are intense. We're going to spend some extra time on them because they are key to his likeness. Step 5. Add the pupil and iris. Step 6. Add the shape underneath the eyes. When we shade later, we will make sure to keep these almost white. Step 7. Do some shading above the eyes. Use this as your reference image for now. Step 8. Shade in the eyebrows. Step 9. Add the shading underneath the eyes. Notice that it is slightly lighter than the tones above the eyes. Step 10. Add the details to the nose. Step 11. Add the heart shape and the shape below it for the upper lip. Step 12. Add the bottom lip. If it looks small, it's because the facial hair blocks a lot of the lips. Step 13. Add the shading for the mustache and beard. Notice the areas in the reference image where it is slightly gray. Step 14. Add the wrinkle lines to the face. Step 15. Add the shape for the hair. Step 16. Add the shapes for the body. All right, so let's take a look at this picture together before we do the shading. Um, so we have um, Mr. Frederick Douglass here, and uh, we put his head uh, or his likeness together uh, with shapes. And now we have to look at those shapes that we put in, and we have to look at the edges of the shapes. So our focus goes uh, from, you know, okay, how do these shapes fit together? You know, how does the forehead shape fit? Uh, how does the uh, the two oval shapes for the eyes, the triangle for the nose? Now we have to look at the edges of this shape. Look at this soft edge right in here. Um, it's a very light tone and a very soft tone, uh, and, and a very soft uh, texture, rather. Um, you have a hard edge, you know, between the um, the highlight and here. You see almost like a real triangle in here. And this is what we're looking to mimic. So uh, we're looking all around 
let's identify our darkest tones definitely the eyes in here the hair down here the hair over here um, goatee over in here clothing um, the hair over here so those are the darkest parts um, highlights over here uh, all the way here his hair is uh, salt and pepper up here um, and just in terms of edges look at the difference of the edge here and here versus here and here this almost blends right into the uh, page in the back so right now while we shade we are focused on the edges all right so let's begin our shading and um, remember you can watch this uh, as many times as you need to and uh, you know take your time with this uh, I am just putting in some uh, cross hatching and uh, I'm looking at my reference image my reference image is never too far away from me um, and like I said a second ago I'm, I'm asking myself about the edges uh, I'm seeing that there's a very sharp edge uh, right in there so uh, I'm uh, fixing the eyes I always tend to do the eyes first uh, that helps me because I feel that that's the most important part of the likeness um, the nose if you notice there's two different sides and two different shadows uh, so the one uh, on the uh, on our right side is going to be darker uh, the face on the right side is going to be darker and I just do layers and layers of hatching there's the first and you can see me there we go there's another one there's a third one uh, and I slowly develop it and um, the hair uh, I kind of put in so that I could do the uh, the basic uh, the um, darkest tones and base everything else off of that. Um, I'm using a paintbrush as well. If you notice, I smudged what I what I uh, cross hatched in, and then uh, I go over it again uh, with another layer of cross hatching, and it helps me build layers. I like the paintbrush because it kind of gets those uh, in between um, you know white spots that whenever you shade. Uh, they always tend to be empty and when you use a paintbrush that doesn't happen uh, it darkens those areas so yeah, I love using it for that reason same thing with the blending stump but I use the paintbrush more often than the blending stump when I shade the hair I follow the direction of the hair for the most part uh, and um, you know so if the hair is pointing in a certain direction my shading is going to go in that direction just like you see right there um, and the hardest part, the one that you'll have to do the most work on, ironically, is the top, uh, where it's uh, really white, because you're working on a white page. It would be the opposite if you were working on a black piece of paper. Right now, he's got the uh, Einstein going on, and we have to kind of fix that, because even though their hairs uh, take the same form, uh, there are differences to them. So we're kind of um, softening the outlines right there, um, so, uh, hardening the edge on the face so that there's a contrast. You could see that dark area um, right by the, uh, the lighter skin tone right there. I like to put texture into the hair. So sometimes instead of just slowly building up the tones, um, I'm, I press really hard. And uh, I do that in the, uh, the salt and pepper sections so that you could see both. I'm going to adjust my light in a second. It's kind of the glare is kind of getting to the drawing that I'm making, uh, but you'll see it um, in a little bit. You don't really see the tones now, but you will uh, pretty soon. Uh, the thing that you have to remember while you shade is sometimes you could shade over marks that you make, and that's what I just did there. Uh, so uh, what I did was I had to make them a little bit darker. Shading is relativity, and uh, you have to make sure to adjust everything so if you have an underlying layer that uh, or an underlying mark that just gets lost in the shading and it is one of the darker tones like those wrinkles on our right side of the face uh, on on his left side of the face you want to make sure that you darken those doing my trick with the um, the paintbrush again I feel that that helps me tremendously Needed eraser. That's also a, a uh, drawing tool. But I think you could see once you get the eyes, you get the whole thing. I spent most of my time uh, on the hair. 
uh, he has some real complex hair. Uh, the uh, blending stump that I'm using there, it really helps with edges. You can soften edges really nicely with that, so I use that. That's a 2B pencil, by the way. And, uh, you know, I use that uh, primarily uh, in this drawing. And again, you know, we our focus has shifted to the edges. So, you know, this photo reference is pretty easy to find online. When you print it out, when you're shading, just think of those edges. You know, let me be like that uh, art conscience that you have uh, that is there to remind you when you're shading. Edges, edges, edges. Notice the edges. That's what makes the difference. Kind of cheated there. Um, I used a marker. Um, <laughs> I have a son that's always calling me. He's like, Dad, come hang out with me. And, uh, you know, it would take a while to build up those tones. So um, forgive me for that. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, you know, that part admittedly is a little bit uh, underdone. But, uh, you know, spending time with the family is the most important thing. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody.